One of the good things about using MediaMonkey is that it can help you locate duplicate files, and we all know it's all too easy to get duplicates. We move a file from one drive to another, one folder to another, we get duplicates. We get copies of the same file in two different places. On this machine here, you see I have two copies of Aaron Neville's For the Good Times. I have it in a folder named Edge, and I have it in another folder named Edge-Old. Same thing with the Aaron Tippin song. It's in my library folder. It's also in a subfolder inside the library folder named Primary Gold. If I select the file and hit the delete key on the keyboard, I can have MediaMonkey remove it from its library database here, or I can have it totally delete the duplicate from the computer altogether. You may want to delete your duplicates, but it's not necessarily important whether you do or not. No matter how many copies you've got of a file, Music One will make only one song card with exactly the same title and artist. If I tell it to import this list, it will make a song card for Aaron Neville's For the Good Times, and it will use the first drive path file that it sees for that card. But when it imports the next record of the same song, it will not make another song card. Instead, it will update the cart field with the second location. There's a good reason for this, and let me show you. Here is a short song report that I've exported from MediaMonkey to a comma-separated text file. Music One can import this file directly. There are ten records here, but there's only five songs. There's two copies of five different songs. There's two copies of You Can't Hide Beautiful, two copies of For the Good Times, two copies of Kiss This. Let's look at the Aaron Neville song. Slide over to the right here, and we can see the path. One copy on the first line is in Library Edge. And on the next line, another copy of the same song is in Library Edge Old. The MP3 title and the artist tags on these two are exactly the same. Title, for the good times, artist, Aaron Neville. The first time M1 imports this, it creates a song card with that title and artist on it and it uses the drive path file name for the record. The next time Music One is doing an import and it comes to this record, whether it's weeks in the future or a millisecond after creating the song card, when it sees another record with exactly the same title and artist, it will not make a new song card. What it will do is replace the drive path file name for the record with what it sees as the new drive path file. I'm going to do an import of this report. In Music One, I open the Import menu and I select Import from CSV. And I locate my file and double click on it. M1 does the import and tells me five tracks were not imported because of missing title or file or because there are duplicates. It shows me five tracks were imported and five duplicates were not imported. Let's open the song card for Aaron Neville now. And we see the cart and file field both have the second drive path file name for the song. The reason Music One does it this way is because in the future you may want to move your audio files to a different folder or more likely to a new computer. You can then get import to re-import your library data. Anything that you have done to a song card, added tempo, gender, maybe some sound codes, all of those things will remain. The only thing that a re-import will change for any record is the drive path file name in the cart and the file field. There's another video and some documentation explaining the difference between these two fields.